One of my favorite aspects of video games comes when hackers and fans alike dig deep down in order to uncover lost sprites, maps, and gameplay elements that would otherwise be lost forever. Take channels like Chassez and his show Boundary Break, where he literally goes out of a game's normal bounds to search for cool stuff. In fact, these types of discoveries have been equal parts exciting and controversial when discovered, so it's always intriguing to see when a new game comes out and its source code is ravaged in order to, you know, search for the secrets. Occasionally the discoveries will be mundane at best, but sometimes certain things are discovered that were never supposed to be there. Or were they? The Mother series has some of the most palpable theories known to the modern gaming world. I personally have covered a few of these on my own channel, and they're certainly one of the best topics to cover. The best thing about a theory is that, well, it's just that. Gamers' minds often run wild at the thought of what the creators may have been thinking when they penned up a character or wrote a scene, or perhaps whether or not there was a more insidious basis for what a character did. You know, it's kind of like when you were in high school and you had to think of the reason behind a Robert Frost poem, only this is way more interesting. When it comes to creativity, there may be few better at emulating it than the Mother series creator, Shigesato Itoi. Why did he want to create a game series set in modern day? Why does Earthbound have such a dark overtone juxtaposed against constant comedic relief? Is there more to Mother 3 than meets the eye? So, to mix interesting gaming theories and unused content together, I present to you Mother 3, a game with so many theories and cut content it warrants some dedicated discussion of its own. Specifically, amidst the droves of unused sprites, backgrounds, enemies, and battles, there exists something sinister, something that stands out from the rest. Mother 3 has one of the most disturbing pieces of cut content I've ever seen in a video game. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. Welcome to the rabbit hole of Lucas's Nightmare. Warning, this video contains heavy spoilers for Mother 3. Please proceed at your own risk. Mother 3 has tons of unused content, all of which has been meticulously extracted through exploring the game's code. If you're familiar with the series at all, you may have seen articles over the years pointing to how the final battle was supposed to be way darker, but Itoya wanted to focus more on the friendship and love aspect of the game instead of the darker tone that Earthbound took. Well, by digging into Mother 3's code, there are more than a few tidbits that link to this. There are a plethora of cutscenes, sprites, and even a series of unused bosses that all support Itoya's wish for a darker ending. The unused boss and backgrounds of Mother 3 heavily incurred some massive amounts of speculation and theory ever since they surfaced on the internet. Although no one is entirely sure who first discovered these secrets, they can be found by doing a bit of digging into the game's code. In order to battle the unused battle backgrounds, in the cheat code menu of emulators such as Visual Boy Advance, 020047EC must be entered into the address bar, and one of its enemy modifier codes must be entered into the value bar. The codes must be put in with 8-bit size and the number format on hexadecimal. You know, for those nerds out there that actually know what that means. There are 13 different enemy modifier combinations, ranging from the strange to the downright terrifying. After entering in this data, you have to encounter an enemy and trigger a battle, and you will see the following.
Deemed by fans as Lucas's nightmare, these disturbing images make almost no sense on the surface. There is no doubt that some of these images are unnerving, but the mystery for their existence makes it all the more interesting. Let's break it down piece by piece. The first thing that I noticed was the obscurely random name assignments that all of the enemies seem to have. Dung Beetle, a silver angel looking thing, Tent Person, a yellow form, Snow Bunny, Clay Man, Sign, Vapor, Rope Snake, Aeolia's Table, Straw, Mini Elevator, Train, and by far the creepiest of the bunch, Vapor 2. None of these names seem to make any sense whatsoever. You know, I, I thought about the names over and over again, tried to work in the first letter of each enemy name, I tried to look for patterns in the names, but I couldn't seem to come up with anything of substance that fit any kind of pattern. In the game's code, all 13 of the unused battles don't have any sort of name associated with them, so it makes the names even stranger to me. Even further debugging into the game's code by sites like the Cutting Room Floor and the Mother 3 fan translation sites yielded no new data on behalf of these enemy names, realistically leaving me to believe that they are nothing more than placeholders. So now that we got the names out of the way, what is with the disturbing imagery that accompanies the enemies? The first few start off creepy, but innocent enough. There are wavering images of Klaus and a masked figure, but the further we go, some of the enemies like Aeolia's Table and Vapor 2 are pure nightmare fuel. It begs the question, what were these battles supposed to be used for, and why? Why are they so creepy? So what's the deal? Why the random assortment of battle attributes, names, backgrounds, etc.? I think if it was supposed to be found, many of the bosses would be exactly identical, but each of these seems to be almost entirely unique. But for what reason could they all possibly exist? Well, as for pretty much anything in the Mother franchise, there are a few theories floating around about them. The first theory is that these enemy sequences were meant to play during a chapter of the game when Lucas experiences some sort of dream sequence. Perhaps this theory was further propagated by the title of the unused battles given by fans. Perhaps Lucas really did have slightly clairvoyant nightmares about he and his brother Klaus becoming more and more intense as Klaus's body was literally being torn apart and rebuilt for him. Maybe their PSI abilities were reaching out to each other through their dreams, helping Lucas understand the pain that his brother was going through as his humanity was being ripped from him. This reminds me a bit of the strange, force-driven connection that Rey and Kylo Ren share in the newer Star Wars movies. They're able to sense and experience some of the feelings the other is encountering, sometimes even to the point where they seem that like they're in the same room as each other. Overall, this theory is intriguing, but I don't feel like Itoi was trying to make Lucas and Klaus's relationship one of purely psychic foundations. I, I just don't buy that. Vapor 2's background and accompanying music help it stand out from the rest. Many theory-driven fans liken the background to the final fight with Gygus and Earthbound. Did Gygus really have a hand in the events of Mother 3? Did Ness and his friends fail to quell the maddening beast and put the genie back in the bottle? As cool of a theory as I would like this to be, and I talk about it a bit in my Gygus Theory video, you can click up above and watch that, Jigasato Itoi pretty much deconfirmed it in an interview with Nintendo Dream, stating, Mother 3 was always planned to be just brother versus brother, and the options they considered were betraying the player, keeping the battle and ending vague and having no dialogue, and other options that Itoi describes as ones that would make you really wonder about the main characters when looking in from the outside. In addition to that, it's very impossible for Gygus to return in Mother 3 due to the fact that he was fatally wounded by human emotions from the events in Earthbound, in which he probably damaged his time-traveling technique. Honestly, I thought it would be cool if Gygus interrupted the final battle between Lucas and Klaus, inhabiting the latter's body and causing all these crazy forms and just this crazy psychedelic experience, but it looks like we got the details set straight from the master himself. 
There's absolutely no connection between Mother 3 and Gygus, with the lone exception being the existence of Porky Minch. Another thought is that these unused boss battles were originally intended to be part of a dream sequence, kind of like I said earlier, but in a different turn. In this case, we're talking much like Ness's nightmare in Earthbound when he goes through Magic Hand. Lucas, in this case, would be thrown into a dream state in which he has to face his past and inner demons in order to make it out of his nightmare alive. This would have also mesh pretty well with the unused cutscenes that were uncovered, showing multiple flashbacks with Lucas and Klaus with their parents. Coincidentally, I think this sequence would fit well into the story during Chapter 2 when Lucas has trouble sleeping over his looming grief from letting Klaus go. He even hallucinates a bit, adding to the potential that these unused boss sprites could have been part of a hallucinatic dream. Granted, this goes a bit above and beyond even the theory that I'm coming up with here, but uh, you know, it is a theory. Was Lucas so incredibly distraught that he envisioned the degradation of Klaus's soul in a moment of clairvoyance? Possibly. It might seem like a stretch, but I think it's a possibility. Now, let's get to our last theory, and to me, this is the one that holds the most weight. I remember hearing in an interview with Itoi where he mentioned the fact that he was going to go for kind of an effect in Mother 3's final battle. He wanted it to be dark, much more intense than that of even the final battle with Gygus and Earthbound. However, even though the second title in the series squeaked by with a K to A rating, which I mean, I'm, I'm honestly still puzzled by it. Like, did they even play the game? Video game ratings were starting to become more and more strict, and I doubt we could have seen anything as ominous as Itoyo was planning and still kept the game rated E for everyone. Nintendo being the family friendly company they are, more than likely shot this idea down and the final battle was changed into what we remember it as today. After all, as I did mention before, Itoi referenced the fact that he wanted the final battle to focus on friendship and love more than the dark tones, and I think there's something that tells me there's more to the story than that. If this really is the case, why leave in the various unused content in the game's code? I've seen tons of hidden things uncovered in video games as planned easter eggs, as well as those items that were obviously left by mistake. What's weird about Mother 3's unused content as a whole is that it falls somewhere in the middle of these. It's not a blatant easter egg, but one that you could kind of argue Itoi requested that it would be left behind and, you know, the rabbit hole opens up, so to speak. It could really keep people's mental cogs spinning for anyone who found it in the feature. Well, I mean, if that's the case, I'd say it worked pretty darn well considering I've now written an entire video about it. Shigesato Itoi is truly a man of mystery. So what do you guys think? Does Mother 3's unused boss content give you the willies like it does me? What are your theories behind where it came from and why it was left behind? Let me know in the comments below. The Mother series is an infinite pool of fan theories. Ranging from the weird to the hilarious, there is no shortage of things to discover. As for Lucas's nightmare though, we may never know the true origins of the unused content or why they were left behind. One thing is for sure though, the mystery is creepy enough to make us think about it for a long time.